Saying that Final Fight was the source of inspiration for many beaten ups is a cliché and an understatement. Every bar in their dog knows the importance of this title and, even nowadays, you still see developers saying that the good and old brawler is one of their main inspirations. The game today falls in the ladder category, but that never stopped the game from being good. The question here is, how good or bad this game really is? And before I forget, hi, I am Savino, and this is The Flying Kick. Released in May or June of 1991, the sources are a little shady about it. This Japan exclusive was created by Sega in conjunction with Wes Stone, the developers of the Wonder Boy series for the arcades. The game was later ported to the TurboGrafx-16, but it passed through some changes, making this version kind of exclusive. As I said in the intro, the game is a clear copy of Final Fight, even with the story. Here you have Poe and Bobby, two detectives that were investigating the fearsome drug cartel Meat. In retaliation, the cartel decided to kidnap Poe's girlfriend, Jessica, uh, I mean, Catherine who could easily be Jessica's sister. After a not-so-brief intro that you only see if you let the attract mode run for a while, Poe and his partner Bob hit the street to solve a kidnap case in the most reasonable way possible, beating everyone in their way around the whole city. I mean, who doesn't want to live in a town with this name? Graphically, the game is not great. While the sprites are somewhat large and with some good details, the backgrounds are often bland and lifeless, lacking detail and most of the time looking a little too grainy for my taste. There are in total 5 levels in the game that will take you across the city, but honestly, while Metro City offers some nice place for you to check, here there is nothing noteworthy or even memorable. The outdoor scenes are simply ugly, showing an uninteresting and lifeless city in the background and the indoor scenes which will take most of the game, we will often show you some ugly walls or armies of faceless people that don't do anything to help the game. Sure, graphics aren't that important, but I mean, having something somewhat presentable can go a long way to help your game. This brings us to the music, and to be 100% honest with you, I played this game to record some footage less than 12 hours before in writing this and I couldn't remember a single track. They are extremely forgettable and a couple of them can even be annoying. Not only the OST is weak, but the quality of the sample isn't great either. Games like Double Dragon 2 on the NES or even the original Double Dragon on the Master System had better samples to work with. Add that to the horrible sound effects, muffled voices and weird screams from your enemies and your ears will be begging you to stop before you finish the second level of the game. I mean, this is Sega we're talking about, and those guys knew very well how to make good music, especially for beaten ups. So far, we have a cliche story, bland graphics, and annoying music. All that rests to save this game is the combat, and, well, you can imagine that things won't be so good here either. First of all, this is your typical two buttons Final Fight clone. One button punch, the other jumps, and both together is your desperation move that will take a little bit of your life. You also have an automatic grab when you get close to your enemy and that's all you have to face is hordes of up to 6 enemies at a time. The grab is a bit weird to be honest, while it works as intended, you can't punch or kick any of your enemies, all you can do is throw them in the direction you are facing. This is a game that came after 3 Double Dragons and Final Fight, there was no excuse to not have this feature. And the problems with the combat don't end there, your sequence of punches is effective, but you will face way too many enemies with a range of attack way bigger than yours, and while you can use your flying kick to shorten this distance, a lot of enemies here have a Donovan complex and they will often hit you in the air. Your flying kick also has the problem of being too quick. If you don't press the attack button at the exact moment, chances are that you will miss 
it. And to add insult to injury, most of enemies will have some sort of charging or jump attack that they can start off screen. And we all know how fun this can be, right? Talking about fun, we all know beaten ups can become way more fun when played with someone else. Well, that's not so much the case here. While the enemies get way more manageable with two players, the game is always in B mode for two players. If you don't get the reference, this was a mode in a lot of NES beaten ups where one player could hit the other during the game. I honestly never understood why this was an option on the NES, but I can understand why they put it here. Great. As if the game weren't challenging enough, with enemies attacking you from everywhere and piling up on you, you and your friends still have to manage each other, keeping distance in different lanes and looking before throwing an enemy. And, of course, in the heat of the battle, you and your partner will end up hitting each other. A little thing that is a little annoying, at least in these times of emulation, is that you can't choose your character inside the game. Here, you have to choose player 1 to play with Paul, or pick player 2 to play with Bobby. And, if you are willing to play this game, you want to play with Bobby. Look at him go, he is enjoying this way more than you. Strangely, this game does not offer any weapon for you to use, no knives, baseball bats, pipes, nada. It took me a while to notice that, but after I did it really bothered me. I'm not really a guy who often uses weapons in these games, but the complete absence of choice was a weird decision in my view. In the end, it is no surprise that Riot City is an unknown game for most fans of the genre. Being a Japan exclusive with little to nothing to offer to a new and blooming genre, this game was made to fall in ostracism. This is clearly Sega trying to put something at the arcades to take advantage of this brand new fever before hitting the console market with a small franchise that you probably heard about. Riot City is a mess. The game was probably hushed to the market, as I said before, and it shows. With boring combats, bad graphics, terrible music and obnoxious sound effects, this game has nothing good going for it. It's not broken or anything, but this isn't an experience worth your time, even in 1991. If this game was released prior to Final Fight, it could be seen as something that was trying to expand over Double Dragon formula, but coming almost two years after Capcom's classic, it's hard to excuse, but at least the game has body. And that's it for the video guys, I hope you enjoyed this quick look on Riot City and tell me in the comment if you already played it or if you will look for it after seeing it here. I would love to know what you guys think then, other than that, I hope you all have an awesome day and remember, keep it up.